WWE. This is Hub Radio. Hello and welcome back to What Should We Do? The show where we question what we ought to be doing or what could we be doing. And today we have our guest, Abby. Hello, hello. Hello Hello again. Hello, yes, hello. (laughs) We had a false uh, intro. So this is Mm. the second intro where your mic is on. And And I can hear myself. And you can hear yourself, which is very good. Uh, And as we were saying, he is coming from the perspective of a Buddhist. Uh, Of course, that's not just what Abby does. He's also a fantastic guitar player, might I say. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. being kind. Do you think it's being kind? Yeah. That's good. It can definitely be better. It could be better, but that's, I suppose that's a good theme. So I'm just going to jump into Buddhism. Um, Okay. So I think a lot of Western people have a small grasp a smaller grasp on Buddhism than in Asia. Buddhism is like a lot more popular around Asia, especially Mm. like China, Japan uh, specifically. And so a lot of people's idea of Buddhism starts with like the imagery of Buddha. They're very familiar with like what he looks like. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely true in in my culture as well. Mm. Like if you go to a temple, Mm. the most like, you know, worshipped place would be where the Buddha statue is. Mm. rather than anywhere else so the the imagery definitely is a big part of buddhism so Mm. in that sense like western culture did manage to you know grasp that they got the imagery but what about the message (laughs) what does the image represent right so the image represents like a a almost perfect human being okay that's that's the almost perfect well and in my sort of like you know um, mm. Growing up, like we hear uh, uh, Buddha is the perfect human being, but mm. now I'm thinking no one's yeah. that perfect. Yeah. See, as a contrast, I grew up on in a a Church of England school, mm. so it's kind of like Protestantism ish. So it's something that Henry the Eighth made. He was like, "Yo, <laughs> come on, guys, let's follow this. Let's new- get divorced." <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was like, "I want more wives." I mean, I mean, in a funny sense, you know, it could have, it could have turned to like something like Islam, which does support uh, polygamy. Mm. Uh, but no, he went for, he went for the church. He didn't explore that much. No, he didn't go, he didn't go too far. He didn't go too far on uh, how I could get more wives. Mm. He went for the for <laughs> alternate Christianity. So we were taught that um, Jesus is is this perfect being the son of god mm. and he, this guy is like he's gonna save you he's coming back i had a friend recently send me a message like yo jesus is coming back and i was like wow Ooh. we'll have a call i'm sure this person might come coming on this summer and it's it's like wow Next okay summer. it's quite amazing um so with with um buddha mm. what did he teach what is he telling us to do? Mm. What's the deal? So, what's the show again? The name of the show? Well, what should we? What should we do? Right. He basically yeah. told that, like, what should we doing as mm. as human beings to each other? Just, just, just be a nice person. That's that's mostly what Buddhism is. Yeah. Just don't yeah. don't kill. Don't kill. Don't steal. That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> and just, just uh, refrain from you know uh, worldly attachments. Ooh. Yeah, well, yeah, well, this I actually thought that would be a good way to int- Well, when I was researching Buddhism and how I've researched Buddhism, the way it's co- most commonly introduced is this, the origin story of Buddha, mm. like a like a comic book. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, here's yeah. The, here's the origin story. So you, you learn that he was born. There of a like in a royal family. Yeah. Uh, there was this person who was like, like a prophet or like a sage or whatever. They had a prophecy, and they're like, oh, he's gonna, if he if he leaves, if he leaves the walls, he'll become a spiritual leader. But if he stays here, he'll be the a great king for your kingdom. Yeah. And so the the the, the father was like, okay, that means I should just never let him outside and let him let him let him know suffering. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was, you know, not a great choice. Yeah. A, f- a pretty bad choice. So he's almost setting up Buddha, to be- or the guy to become Buddha. Yeah, but uh, in, in like, like, ironically, because he was so, uh, like, pressured to be inside the, the palace, mm. or, like, four different palaces right? for four different uh, yeah. seasons, Yeah. Uh, he seeked out what's, like, you know, when he would travel from one palace to the other palace, he would see things outside the palace, so mm. he'll be yeah. way more curious than a normal right. 
a person in right. that time in India it, would be. It is just like as we are kids and our parents go, don't go this way and don't do that. You only like your mind explodes. You're like, oh, but what could be there? What could be over here? And so this guy, Devakam yeah. Buddha, uh, had the same experience yeah. in an even more extreme way because it, it just like no suffering. The father did not want to show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, suffering to this guy but then he saw it then he saw it <laughs> then he saw it and he and was like, like what's going on what? here wow, I don't like this and he, and then, and then he was hit with the question that the show also is wondering is what what, what do we what, what should we be doing mm. <laughs> what should we be doing yeah. for the greater good of mankind well I th- I'm not sure how he started <laughs> on his quest on his quest of I think he just I my imagination was he started questioning based on how to stop suffering like yeah he, a lot of not suffering yeah yeah that's that's mainly what he started on because he, mm. he's so uh, an old person yeah and uh, a dead person and uh, my mind's going blank I think now. it was like an ill ill yeah there's like four a four different things poor and dead yeah yeah, yeah yeah and he was like oh why is that a thing yeah it's like because you've never seen it before and he's like huh? yeah. what's that what's, like, what's happened to that guy why Why does that happen to people yeah I've never experienced that why, yeah. does, he, why does he have to then experience he, that then he, then he go into more questioning mm. about why are we here yep yep and what's our purpose yeah so I mean you, Just, you have those you know, thoughts coming to your head now and then yeah but now, you, now I have all those thoughts for me are in, in this show <laughs> <laughs> and I was like it's a similar thing. Of course, I didn't go as far as, as Buddha did when he mm. started questioning. Yeah, he, he went extreme. He went all the way. Yeah. And I, you know, maybe I should. Maybe we should. Because mm. he, he just ejected. If there was like an eject, li- eject button for life, but like... Poof, yeah, that's a good way of saying it. He's yeah, just like, yeah. peace out. Yeah, 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 I got to yeah. solve this thing, guys. I'm out. Bang. Yeah, gotta, I, I have to find the truth. I got to go. And <laughs> truth can be anything. You know? it, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ain't finding it here. Whoa. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those like you have the answer already. Yeah, you don't know the question. Like yeah. answer is suffering, but you don't know the question. Yeah, I see your point. So for those, I should elaborate on the story. So essentially, when we when we, when we mean he ejected life, he just left his life of, of uh, being royalty, and he went out into the wild to seek answers. Mm. Uh, and yeah, he's. Well, it started a lot around meditation general theme and and starvation yeah well he basically found other people who was also in this journey to find yeah, the truth yeah so yeah. he found the other people also did meditation yes and then he he just started hanging out with you know <clears throat> uh, dudes in force you know <laughs> meditating <laughs> that's some good advice you know what we should do later let's go hang out with some dudes <laughs> yeah just, in just go in the and yeah <laughs> sit there down was, there might be some interesting guys there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what do these guys say? Uh, well, they they said what they know, or what they found yeah, out already, yeah. and it wasn't enough for Buddha. He was like, oh, I almost that's ima- not enough. I almost imagine it like uh, today's world of science, but instead of the forest is now like the the world of knowledge, and scientists are people trying to seek answers, and they mm. put out their, all the answers they know for everyone else to scrutinize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a similar process. Yeah. It's basically a scientific study, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's a spiritual matter. <sighs> it's a spiritual matter. <laughs> What's real? <laughs> exactly. And yeah, then he just went, I'm going to meditate. Well, yeah. I should... at some point he was like, okay, I've, I've, I've done enough, uh, you know, going around and asking other people. Yeah. I'm just going to sit yeah. down uh, and figure this out myself. I'm going to do it myself. And this is similar to like, almost any skill that we all take on we mm. first look we see it happen we imitate it yeah. and then we take our own our own uh step towards it yeah, yeah and that's when it becomes more valuable to other people as well it's like oh okay you're doing your own spin on this that's that's more that's more interesting yeah it's very yeah. similar you you said it better than anyone else. <laughs> no 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 no, no. <laughs> i could be wrong though eh, i don't know well, it's, it checks out with uh, like in terms of like now now we're, we're getting sidetracked um like that's okay. how, I, how i started playing guitar <laughs> yeah um well, I I went to a guitar teacher first. Yeah, and right. you know did the imitation bit. Yeah, you should say okay, okay. Then at some point, 
uh, I was like, okay, I've I've learned things, mm. and I'm not getting progressed from yeah. you know the teacher. So I just you know, yeah, did it by myself after that. Yeah, just you know practicing with you know other songs or exactly. jam tracks or whatever. Yeah, and this is the. I suppose this is a good. Maybe we're learning something here today. Mm. Wow, could we could we be taking away something? If we were going to take away something from this part of the conversation, it, it'd be that. Yeah, don't be. Uh, just fast track to doing it yourself. <laughs> just, just you know, we could imitate, but just you know, why not just just go straight for it? Do your own thing. Mm. I think, or maybe not. You can definitely. I mean, some people have like. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm still speaking with like guitars. Yeah. I mean, like you know, so, like, so many like famous guitar people have done it themselves mm. or claim mm. that they've done it themselves mm. but you still have to imitate first to learn something that's like like a fundamental part of learning is imitation like, yeah that's what that's we do true. as babies or whatever oh that's true it's in the very root of of uh yeah as being human like if, if you figure out how to play guitar by yourself then mm. you would not be playing how other people will be playing guitar yes and there's actually that i can't remember the band there's a band that did almost do that mm. by being trapped in a basement by their crazy father oh yeah, yeah. The three <laughs> and daughters the, and yeah. the father yeah, and the yeah. music they made was very different yeah. because they had less to imitate from but it's but they had just enough mm. it was like almost like music yeah, I mean, that we think. you have the uh, sort of like the the limitations of a guitar being a very ergonomic instrument. Mm. So there's only so many ways you can play <laughs> it. In that sense, True. yeah, you will be playing. Is the, car, oh, the guitar's limiting? <laughs> it's a limit. The tool mm. it has its limits. Yeah, I think everything has its you know, yeah. limitations. Well, as soon as you label it, it has a limitation. Because then if you if it goes beyond what you've called it, then yeah. it's not that anymore. Yeah. And it makes no sense. Yeah. So these are useful things. <laughs> it's useful to label things. Mm. Label things and maybe limit yourself. Sometimes. <laughs> and then, well, I guess the um, the weird, like, back and forth that is us is that we say, like, oh, yeah, we should, like, maybe we should limit things. But we're being cautious because we also know that we do need to push ourselves, mm. which means... We need to simultaneously label things, but at the same time go past that label. Yeah, so that's that's one thing uh, I had um, like uh, with Buddhism. Uh, mm. One of the messages is um, be satisfied with what you already got. Yeah, but it's also contradictory to what Buddha did. Mm. He was not satisfied with what he got. No, therefore he pushed himself to become someone else. Yeah, or Became Learned Buddha. something, yeah. Yeah, it literally became a different name. So, person. yeah, there's there's so many contradictions, um, but that's that's like one of the main things. Like growing up, uh, I was like, yeah, like if if you need uh, if you're satisfied with what you got, then you know, great. But yeah. also, yeah. you just you just being a start being a, a rock or something. I'm imagining like. Um, okay, I have a rock. And I'm like, you know, I should really just be satisfied with just this rock and nothing else. But if I was really satisfied with just a rock, I I just I would die. I was, I was like, I don't need to eat. I have a rock. Yeah. I don't need to go anywhere. I have this rock. Yeah, yeah. I'm very satisfied with this. Or rock. just become a rock. <laughs> Maybe I would become the rock <laughs> if I was just so was I so truly satisfied with just a rock and nothing and nothing else mattered. Yeah. Then. Uh, it seems kind of interesting if you would, but like if they were to like if they would say die, mm. obsessed with the rock, would you call that a bad life? Mm. Would you call that a bad life? And what do you define as a bad life? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what we call a good or bad life. I mean, I, I give this guy points for not causing more suffering. Mm. Just like I had a rock, and I was happy yeah, with that. He was, he was living with himself and, and the <laughs> yeah. rock. Kind of romantic as well, <laughs> in a sense. Like, oh, look at him. Yeah, with special bond with his rock. <laughs> Doing his own thing. Yeah. So the next part of Buddhism we're going to talk about is the Four Noble Truths. But before we do, let's listen to another song from Abby's playlist. Oh, yeah. Why not? Because we can. We should. And so here we go. Welcome back to what we should be doing, 
Well, what? Well, yeah. What? What should we be doing? What should what, we be doing? What should we do? <laughs> These all questions are relevant. Mm. And I'm here today with Abby, who's uh, coming from a background of Buddhism, and we're talking about Buddha and the teachings and how they apply to us, life. Uh, and, and another disclaimer: I don't claim to be the authority on what we should and shouldn't be doing. Mm. That's the point of the show: is just to simply discuss it. Yeah. And so we, we left the show about to talk about the Four Noble Truths, mm. which is, if I'm not mistaken, one of the f- first things you kind of consume about what we ought to or not to be doing in terms of Buddhism. Right. Like, the Four Noble Truths, there's so many, like, numbers and, like, guidelines and rules or whatever. <laughs> not regulations. <rules>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's like, uh, first, you know, sadness... Then I actually have why the sadness. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like compare to, yeah, yeah. What? maybe sadness. Yeah, it's close. Maybe it's right. I have wrote. I've written down as dukkha, dukkha. Yeah, which translates to suffering, basically. Yeah, yeah, sadness, suffering. It's mm-hmm. like the same mm-hmm. thing. Basically. That's number one yeah. of the noble truths. Yeah, and the second one is why, why dukkha? Ooh. Why? How to escape dukkha? That's why I've written down here. It, it, it follows um, through to the final one, right? it which is, is the final one is how to get rid of it. <laughs> oh, that's interesting because what I read it. Well, I actually I actually struggled to understand the noble truths. To be frank, <laughs> like, I was reading no it and, and I was like, these are really lucid in the terminology to where they all they all very much are very closely linked to each other, hmm. and they all just kind of take from each other. So when you read one noble truth. It's as if I'm also reading the, the other ones as well. Yeah, they're, they're sort of interconnected. That's why it has to follow through to the end of, like, mm. end of suffering. So I'm going to hit you with what I, what I have my interpretation yep, yep, of why I thought it was. So number one is suffering. And then number two, which is called Samuda? Samuda? I'm pronouncing S- it? Yeah, some of, some of the... Yeah. Some of that. Uh, which is like, talking about how... The result of escaping suffering, which turns into like cravings, desire, mm-hmm. and then the third one is letting go of the su- the cravings, desire, mm-hmm. and the fourth one being uh, go follow the, go follow the uh, the path, the eightfold path on how to contain uh, suffering and desire. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think that yeah that, that yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good to hear. <laughs> Yeah, you, you done your research. I tried. <laughs> Gold star. Nice. <laughs> so, I mean, so generally it's about suffering, which is literally what uh, dukkha mm. translates into. Yeah, yeah. D- dukkha means, uh, like literally means in, in my language, sadness. Ah. Yeah, dukkha. In, in Sinhalese. In Sinhalese, yeah. Yes. Because this is a bit of a, like, a, ta- like a, bit of a tangent. Because it, it was originally the language he used was not singular it's Pali it's Pali that was right yeah. yes which is an old is it older? It's, older it's old it's old I'm not sure how old it is it's uh, I mean th- there's so many uh, it's old how do you say like overlaps I mean, between languages old languages from I mean it's the Indian know, once territory. we get over over 1000 years which this is mm. it, it's old yeah, yeah. like <laughs> it's Sanskrit old. and Pali and Sinhalese now they, they're just like some of the words like really overlap each other and I they mean, mean the same thing and again just to kind of like to kind of stop moving because we're moving pretty quicker and just, just 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 like appreciate we are in fact talking about a topic that supposedly started over like 1400 years ago about well Buddha Buddha died like 2500 or something years ago Oh, okay, it was 2,500 years yeah. ago. Yeah. It's pretty old. Yeah. And we're here 2,500 years it's still, later. It's still there. It's still there. I think it's the fourth biggest religion. Hmm. Um, although there's another topic to be had on the, the different variations of Buddhism, like any major religion. There's different interpretations hmm. of the damn thing, which makes it more challenging. Yeah. This is almost like a test. Yeah, it is. So in in Sri Lanka, where I grew up, uh, mm. the the Buddhism is so different to what's happening yeah. in, in China. Or and Japan. actually, I want to stop you there. For people who don't know where Sri Lanka is, 
Because some people don't know. Because <laughs> it's yeah, it's okay. It's a it's not a major power. No, could be a major power if they put that you know the coins yeah. in the right place. Yeah, the, the, the most <laughs> most um, well, I, British people uh, would know about Sri Lanka would be cricket and the current economic crisis there. And uh, that that's yes. been on news quite <laughs> recently, which is which is a statement on the state of Sri Lanka. But the mm. um, it is just next to India, like the south. East, it's like a teardrop next to India. Yeah, it's like the small little island next to India. Yeah, it's another island nation. It is. Which is cool. <laughs> and you've just come to another island nation. Yes. So I have an island mind. <laughs> so maybe Japan next? Maybe Japan. I don't know. They're, they're pretty close though, man. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. So we were talking about um, suffering mm. for noble troops. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, it's a big topic. Yeah. This is huge. It's it's so huge that there are there are so many, um, as I said before, like different guidelines and like it's, mm -hmm. it, it turns like Buddhism that I sort of been taught in school became like a numbers thing and yeah. it's so confusing. Oh, a numbers thing. Yeah, there's there's so many different guidelines and like like four noble truths. Like there are other things that call like for this thing. It's extra. It's not extra. It's 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 hard to define because uh, so uh, like for like normal people, mm. there are five guidelines that yeah. you should follow um, if you're a Buddhist. Yeah, and if you're a monk, that's that turns into eight things. Okay, and that's just that's just the main guidelines for yes. everyday. Yes use i guess yes to like live by so what you're telling me is there's a lot of variations or added on things as well as yeah the four noble truths it's it's probably uh something that happened after um like buddha because buddha just spoke to people yeah and that was enough to make people enlightened whoa uh, Imagine having that kind of uh, ability. Yeah, and that that's what he did. So um, going back to how the religion was when he was alive. Yeah. He would be speaking to people and the people would get enlightened and they would devote, them, devote themselves into Buddhism and some become monks. Oh. And monks are basically spokesperson to Buddha, Buddha so they'll travel more and you know here's spread. a here's an interesting question so was it that buddha asked for them to be monks or was it they decided to serve him uh it, it definitely they decided to serve him after that's hearing what he had to say that's interesting rather than that's a very different thing yeah. there's a huge difference between asking for someone to serve you and someone deciding they want to serve you yeah yeah that, that's, that's what, what i mean like it shines, a, it shines a good light in that sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not definitely like oh you know, become become Buddhist. Uh, you get you get free uh, McDonald's voucher or something. No, and monk, turning into monks is a good topic because the idea for me, Western man, to turn into a monk would basically uh, see sacrificing a lot of the pleasures, the leisures, the ease mm. of living. Yeah. it's like throwing them into the wind. Yeah, yeah, um, it's it's a lot of uh, <laughs> like yeah. everything. Yeah, almost like your family, like oh, your loved ones. My loved ones. Yeah, it's it's. Like, um, I'm sure you, you've seen Avatar: The Last Airbender. I have seen the Avatar: The Last Airbender a few times. And uh, spoiler alert for those who've not seen it, uh, Susie, <laughs> <laughs> and other people. Um, yeah. So at towards the end of the show, um, you have to. Uh, there's a there's an episode where you have to open your chakras to become the Avatar. Yeah, and it's like that's really like in line with what Buddhism and how monks are being trained, or yeah. how monks become monks. Yeah, are like getting rid of mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. attachments yeah. to your yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, I might start a religion based on the Avatar that that's been <laughs> I mean, it's already exists, man. It's called <laughs> Buddhism. <laughs> True, and the way the Avatar, like you said, deals with 
um, which I think is interesting and reflective of what I just said about how I can't imagine being a monk. I can imagine it. Mm. I'm not sure why I'd want to be a monk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, like an avatar, less airbender, he had to to become truly enlightened under the view of this uh, the guy who's training him. He had to let go of his love. Mm. And that was the hardest thing. The he main, did yeah, yeah, the main character is like, what? I don't want to do that. Yeah. Why should I do that? And he didn't. Uh, and it's kind of like a it's a weird note in that show it's also a weird note in Buddhism in this sense perhaps mm. is where Buddhism starts to divide can anyone become the Buddha or do you have to be a specific route uh, for a monk th- th- that's it like you have to get rid of everything otherwise mm. there's no point of becoming a monk just be a, a normal you know civil person yeah. and you can you can still be a Buddhist but you can't call yourself a monk so could you be a could you reach enlightenment without being a monk uh yeah okay like, and, and That's like when Buddha was alive there's def- definitely well, people I mean, I, I mean Buddha did it so yeah I mean, and Buddha, <laughs> yeah Buddha, Buddha wasn't a monk before he, he was, was definitely a, not yeah. no That's the proof is in the pudding yeah but there are people who I think that do say otherwise in Buddhism but of course this is kind mm. of a a really vague and uh, not so defined avenue of conversation because I don't really know. Yeah, I and think of course well, there'll be some outliers, and I can't <laughs> name them. So what's really the point? And <laughs> well, we can start. We can stay away from this. I mean, uh, I think that purely exists uh, for monks, like you know, heavy scrutinized for monks because they are the the example of Buddhism, like what's left of it. Oh, and okay. it, it's like. Um, I don't know it's like uh having like a good character like so they are, they uphold a tradition yeah it's like this is interesting if if you follow those guidelines then you'd uh less likely to be you know yeah a bad person yeah. or like have a bad image that's mm. that's the thing image true you, your image is monk if you become a monk yeah you look like one you act like one yeah it's like and monk. these are the guidelines for and it and these are the guidelines it's very straightforward mm. I mean I have um, it's just hard to do <laughs> it is really I mean yeah I've not even begun to imagine what it's like to for everything that we have in the modern world like, ima- like imagine yeah so like this is like really stereotypical imagine having no phones but it goes further than that imagine mm. having no family mm-hmm. I- imagine uh, the way you get food completely transformed the way you make the food as well completely transformed yeah it is like it's a complete lifestyle change yeah and and loads of monks uh, in Sri Lanka uh, become monks at, at a very young age I mean if you do it from a very young age it, like learning any, anything it's much easier to adapt to because yeah. that's what becomes what you know but Be- also like imagine like you're you're like like seven years old yeah and you basically go out like just just you know remove yourself from your family like at you know that's hard that's hard they do it yeah that's hard see this is a this is a good question um i think the the beg the show is begging the question should should you become a monk Hmm. why is it is it necessary to lead a good life Mm. I think it's it's definitely uh, something that happens less and less by the the time uh, mm. progress. So, so like the trend is trend is going downwards for monks, which means a lot of different things. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a good action. It just means that the climate today, the social climate, doesn't support the root of being a monk. Because mm. in the future, it could change. Yeah, I mean, it sort of does, and it also, you know, there are other things that doesn't, like, um, support for monks today are, you know, enormous, like, mm. if you want to, if you're coming from, like, a, a, a low-income uh, family, mm. becoming a monk is really good. <laughs> Like yeah, you get you get you get benefits as a monk in in Sri Lanka. I mean, imagine imagine being someone who's like, I want to become a monk for the benefits. Yeah, because people can, respect think, you for a monk in Sri like, Lanka. Wouldn't that be missing the point of being a monk? Yeah, but your intentions are seem a bit odd. Yeah, but also like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. that's just like one of those ways of becoming a monk. Yeah. But by 
having that intention at first but then you become a monk and live a certain lifestyle mm. it's almost like i yeah. mean with we just discussed the idea that you you can reach enlightenment without being a monk mm. then why be a monk uh well monks are as i said before um uh. spoke person for buddha so it's, it's to uphold the it'd yeah. be more ex- like not extreme like more it's to conservative teach yeah it's more conservative and Ooh. it's to teach buddhism to uh normal everyday people i see like it's they, like a, they understand uh, complex buddhism then I they can simplify yeah. for yeah, okay. simple people but it sounds pretty useful then in this yeah. sense it's yeah. like if i want to know more mm-hmm. talk to a monk yeah <laughs> just talk to a monk they know a lot that's what they do mm-hmm. that is their purpose well that's it's almost like a job like like yeah. lawyers like they have to study so much law it is exactly like law and so many books god it's very similar <laughs> <laughs> well like you mentioned there's a lot involved in becoming there's a lot of reading and numbers involved mm-hmm. which was really unexpected to me because my my idea of buddhism before was the idea that yes anyone can do it anyone could become it mm. through it through a lot of different means mm-hmm. mostly just kind of focusing on pain and suffering mm. which is also a really common theme a lot of other religions it's like this idea of pain and suffering uh, and then eventually, if you just keep keep at that grind, you'll you'll feel better. Yeah, it's it's well, um, uh, like Buddha's word about it is, um, just do it at at your own pace. Do it at your own pace. Yeah, that's nice. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, it's like you you don't need to be a monk to be a Buddhist, mm. or like you don't have to follow all the rules in the the guide line of rules book whatever yes to be a buddhist just follow some things and you know what you and, we, can. and we're going to expand on that question after another be- beautiful song from abby's playlist okay <laughs> so see you after this hello and welcome back to what should we do the show where we explore what people are doing and whether or not we should or shouldn't be doing these things. And today, I am I'm here with Abby. Hello. And we're talking about Buddhism. 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 And when we left off to some music, we were talking about suffering. Yeah. Which is a huge part of um, the discussion around Buddhism. Yeah. Yeah. I Have, mean, we could be suffering right now. We are uh, suffering right I think now. I think I am suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think I'm, I think my suffering levels are low right now mm. because um, it feels more. Oh, it's a really good word for it. Mm, it's not. It's not a flow state. Uh, it's like a flow state. Mm. You're in the zone. I'm in the zone. Is another phrase for this mm. flow state. I'm in the zone. My head's in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Although yeah. the head's in the game is actually maybe not a good good phrase because that suggests the game. The game, oh. The game, yeah. Yeah, there, there, there are so many games. Yeah, there's a lot of games. And there are games games. And then, and suffering and games kind of go hand in hand, in a sense. Mm. Because if if you play the game... You suffer. You'll suffer, yeah. If you don't play the game, you also suffer. But we have to acknowledge the game. Mm. <laughs> what is the game? And the suffering. The game, of course, is the... In the most vague sense, is what people call life today yeah it's a huge game Everyone, yeah. and the game's con- the meta of the game is changing and this is what I'd call like social the social uh, atmosphere hmm. so this game doesn't necessarily support the move of me running outside and screaming a lot of people be like you shouldn't be doing that you shouldn't be playing in this game like that mm. but maybe in a different culture maybe in a different part of time that would have been seen as a totally all right thing to do yeah the if, rules if, change you know england just won against some match right now this exactly would be very appropriate if exactly if england were to win the world cup and that very night i would then run out and scream then i'd be that's okay to yeah. play that's a game to play yeah then. the game approves <laughs> so it's different and so this is the game and then people see you play in the game and they also suffer it's a it's a it's a ball ache and so the next question naturally would be what am I ought to, what am I ought to be doing what am I ought to be doing if I if if this is all if this is a big if mm. if this is all a game what should I be doing mm. and this is the show this is this is the point of this show yes well I think I've said this 
before uh, mm. when we have some you know otherworldly conversations. Uh, mm. Where are you at right now, and what are you doing right now? Yeah, that's a really good is, question. It's definitely that's a great question. What you be doing right now? <laughs> yeah, and and it's the this is a fantastic question for like anyone. And it's, there's a story, I can't remember who between, but essentially it was a guy going to another guy who he thought was more wise. Mm. And he went like, what, what am I doing? Why am I suffering? And the other guy was like, well, who's asking? Where's the question coming from? And that is a, like always a great starting point into like delving deep into yourself and going into these many layers. And this, this is what meditating is also kind of about. It's kind of just actually also praying. Praying is also like a form of meditation. I'm kind of bleeding into other faiths now. But the yeah. point is, you just question your actions and you unveil the rules that you play and go, like, why did I do this action like this? Why would I find it suffering? And you realize that you just, you're playing a very funny game. We play some really weird games. Yeah. And you can definitely imagine yourself suffering. Yeah. And think, oh yeah, I'm suffering. I must be suffering. Just because you imagine you're suffering. I'm trying to think of like a recent, recent example of suffering for me and suffering. How about not getting the bus in time? That's very relatable. Not yeah. getting the bus in time. Actually, this is the game. Not getting let into a house. So I went around someone's house. I knocked on their door hmm. and they didn't answer. I know they were in the house. Oh. And so at that moment, I was like, should I be upset or should I not be upset? Like I'm not being let in. And I was left out there for 20 minutes. Ooh. And a lot of people would find that like quite hard. But <laughs> in this moment, I was probably feeling pretty playful because instead I, I just played a game. I played a new game. The game wasn't be suffering, uh, wait, you know, be annoyed that I couldn't be let in. The new game was, well, let's enjoy the fact I can't be let in. And so the person who, who should have let me in, I was just you know, sending them like crazy messages. Like, I was like, yeah, man, do you notice this thing and this thing about this door? And, yeah. you know, maybe like, and I, like and I turned around, I wasn't staring at the door anymore. I turned around and I was like, wow, there's a guard in here. And it, the okay. game completely changed. So you found ways to distract yourself from suffer. And that's actually another form of suffering. <laughs> <laughs> According to the, the, the Four Noble Truths, you don't want to be distracting yourself. Mm. You are, ought to be... Oh, well, I don't know what you If you're to be. let into that house um, in time, then you'll be doing something different. Definitely. Yeah. Man. Not distracting yourself. Those are gun. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I find I find doors endlessly fascinating. Mm. It's like you are in one place and you open the door and then you're in another place. Yeah, and it's, some doors it's mad. won't open. <laughs> sometimes you want to open. Sometimes you don't want to open. Right. Sometimes you stare. Sometimes at you got to find the button. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh man, buttons can be hard to find. Or the pad. Doors are like a really good microcosm for being in life. Essentially, going from one state to the other. Mm. And it being transitional. Doors are transitional. Yeah. It's it's transferring into different universes. I mean like as a game, like mm. in games. Mm. It's it's literally a different zone. Yeah. Like when you walk through a door, you can be in a completely different yeah. part of a, a, a game map. Yeah, video games really exploit life. <laughs> they really uh, it made it into next level extremes yeah. and really cater it to much more pleasurable things. And films and music, these are all like hmm. altered versions of what we're experiencing to a more pleasant way. Yeah, the, the one thing I've uh, like thought about is we, we don't have uh, really have a way to replicate smell. Mm if you only have a way to replicate smell that would be the day as a society we will start to become more into uh, metaverse and you know true if they were to work on the smell technology yeah because smell is so powerful you don't realize yeah like you can smell something right now that mm. you, you it could trigger memories in your yeah. like really like you know small like childhood memories yeah like it's, it's yeah. just Amazing. Smell is time travel in that sense. Yeah, like it's it's more effective than I think than like the the vision or like sound. Really? Yeah. I think I'm a, I'm not gonna get that crazy. I'd say it's it's about as effective. That's it's a, it's a powerful sense for sure. Mm. Uh, I'd say it's it can be just as effective. Hmm. Uh, like with music and stuff, like yeah, it, it triggers certain emotions, but it it's it. 
I don't know. For me, it never sort of triggered memories. No. Unless if I heard the same song somewhere, you know. No. There are songs that would trigger memories. Get off it. <laughs> if I had to do Get something with the, ac- the same song, yeah, probably. But like, you with know, I smells. Could... Smells? True, you don't really have, like, um, eating. So mm-hmm. I was going to say, we don't really have an activity that involves people sitting down and smelling like music where you sit down and listen or like a film where you, you watch mm-hmm. we haven't got the equivalent or you think of eat, of, of uh, smelling yeah. <laughs> so this is actually an interesting gap of, of this market exploit the senses and then you can you can market it yeah. yes this is, this is getting really out of like <laughs> out of track to the main point yeah. but the point being I think there is because mm. eating is a very uh, smell orientated experience yeah I mean yeah the uh, there's like you know Michelin star restaurants that you know, and they go into like oh yeah experience different sensations exactly with the smell and they and they cater to the, the sense of smell and yeah. so it's like a and and drinking and and sometimes cheese mm. drinking wine and cheese yeah this, this is getting into the the connoisseur <laughs> points where but they do um, use the smell like, yeah, yeah I mean that's that's a big part of the the, the market like the selling points are like <laughs> oh yeah uh, the smell smell of the uh, the vanilla um, chocolate you had as a you know like a three year old and so what we all should be doing is enjoying our sense of smell more clearly it's it's definitely like not as appreciated yeah, just pay attention to the smells you get every day well you reminded me of um, this story it's something like my dad does he mm. just he walks into rooms and he goes like a big whiff mm. and he's even like doesn't realize he's doing it and says nothing and says nothing <laughs> <laughs> actually I heard a okay this I'm not going to get to this story I, I'm avoiding gossip because that's <laughs> that's probably a good thing <laughs> the um, but yeah so what should we be, what should we do what should we do that's the end on this question mm. in terms of Buddhism what can we take away from Buddhism I mean I like taking your time that's a very nice one taking your time yeah like you don't have to be at like you know your best self now instantly oh, yeah it's like oh, a yeah. process the reality is you you're never going to be your best self wow. there will be a point you will you know peak at something but you don't know that true you don't know if you peaked yourself yet true until you realize it even then who's to say like that's that's just what you hear in your mind yeah. but for someone else you could be peaking in a different point in time so yeah like being better is it's so vague yeah just just enjoy life <laughs> and I don't know just be good to others yeah while you live your life I mean if 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 we, if we were to come back we're gonna we, we, the question would be how on all, all those things how yeah but it, we don't have time for that unfortunately mm. so you'd have to read about religions I mean that's it's kind of what this is <laughs> kind of <laughs> but the question of how is definitely could be explored and for those if who are listening how in this case is great so thank you Abby oh, thank you very much for having me yeah it's been a pleasure we had a lot of I learned a lot about Buddhism because also something that's great if it's something you want to know hmm. if you talk about it like if you try to educate someone else on it yeah it reaffirms your knowledge oh yeah definitely. on the subject so a so friend Lawrence is nodding in the room here oh, so it, it, it's a it's a um, visual confirmation <laughs> <laughs> and yeah thank you there's nothing really else to say here. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us today on What Should We Do? I hope that uh, you have... Some part of this conversation has resonated with you in the broadest sense, be it a, a, uh, either like, oh, that's an interesting idea, or like, oh, this is a questioning of what I currently do. And that's, that's actually nothing to be worried about. This is something that you should... You know, maybe, you should maybe you should focus on and, and see so you can find an answer to why because it might be a good thing or not but this is you know again I'm not the authority in what you should and should be doing the point is we're exploring it you should definitely listen to this radio (laughs) (laughs) and until next week (laughs) goodbye thank you very much